We've all experienced some kind of life problem that has forced us to stop in our tracks and re-examine who we are and what we value in order to move forward. Worldview stories give readers a glimpse into how other people, aka your characters, deal with and survive these roadblocks. They give readers a sense of relief and satisfaction and maybe even hope that they too can survive whatever roadblocks or challenges are appearing in their own lives. And the beauty of these stories is that when the protagonist discovers something about themselves, the reader ultimately discovers something about themselves too. So not only does the protagonist grow and change, but the reader might grow and change a little bit too. Welcome to the Fiction Writing Made Easy podcast. My name is Savannah Gilbo, and I'm here to help you write a story that works. I want to prove to you that writing a novel doesn't have to be overwhelming. So each week, I'll bring you a brand new episode with simple, actionable, and step-by-step strategies that you can implement in your writing right away. So whether you're brand new to writing or more of a seasoned author looking to improve your craft, this podcast is for you. So pick up a pen and let's get started. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the conventions of the worldview genre. So these are the character roles, settings, and events that need to be present in a worldview or coming-of-age story in order for it to work and to satisfy fans of the genre. I'm also going to show you how these genre conventions show up in the movie The Perks of Being a Wallflower. So if you're writing a worldview novel, this episode is for you. And if not, don't worry because I'm going to cover each of the other genres soon. Now, before we dive in, let's quickly talk about what makes a coming-of-age story or what makes the worldview genre unique. Worldview stories focus on a period of the main character's life where he or she is transitioning from one significant state to another. These stories show how the external events of the plot affect a character in such a way that he or she must grow, change, and awaken to a new understanding of themselves or to the world around them. And if that sounds really familiar, or if it sounds like every story you've ever read, then you're right. This type of emotional arc or internal worldview change can actually be found in almost every story. A lot of young adult novels fall into this genre because young adult stories tend to be about a character who comes of age or who transitions from youth into adulthood. But not all worldview stories need to feature a teenage protagonist who's coming of age. I'm sure we've all met a few adults who have some kind of growing up to do, right? So regardless of the age of the protagonist, these stories usually end with the same realization. Life's not going to change, so I better change instead. And usually this changes for the better, making the protagonist a stronger, happier person with a new appreciation for the life ahead of them. People love to read worldview novels because they're super relatable. Life doesn't always give us what we want, right? I mean, we've all been kicked in the butt by life at one point or another, whether that's through puberty, divorce, death, a midlife crisis, losing a job, or the pains of adolescence. I mean, you name it. We've all experienced some kind of life problem that has forced us to stop in our tracks and re-examine who we are and what we value in order to move forward. Worldview stories give readers a glimpse into how other people, aka your characters, deal with and survive these roadblocks. They give readers a sense of relief and satisfaction and maybe even hope that they too can survive whatever roadblocks or challenges are appearing in their own lives. And the beauty of these stories is that when the protagonist discovers something about themselves, the reader ultimately discovers something about themselves too. So not only does the protagonist grow and change, but the reader might grow and change a little bit too. These stories are really just so universal because life is universal. We all experience it, right? We all have our own set of challenges and roadblocks and just these times of great change in our lives. And like all genre fiction, you have to deliver the emotional experience readers are looking for in order for your story to work. And to deliver this emotional experience, you need to include the obligatory scenes and conventions of your genre in your novel. So like I mentioned earlier, in today's episode, we're going to look at the conventions of the worldview genre or of coming of age stories. And in case you've never heard this term before, genre conventions are the character roles, settings, and events that are specific to a genre. So they're what help us writers write a story that works. And when coupled with your genre's obligatory scenes, they help us evoke emotional reactions in our readers too. So let's take a look at what these worldview genre conventions are and how they show up in the movie The Perks of Being a Wallflower. 
And if you're wondering why I'm going to walk you through these key scenes in a movie, it's just because movies require less of a time investment, and I'm hoping that you've either seen The Perks of Being a Wallflower or that you'll at least watch it after listening to this episode to help you cement these genre conventions in your mind. So of course you can and should study these conventions in your favorite coming of age stories, but for today, we're just going to look at them in a movie. As I go through these conventions, I want you to consider why each of these roles or settings or events would need to be in a worldview novel or what purpose they serve in the overall narrative. You're going to notice that each of these conventions has a really specific reason why it needs to be there. And because of that, you can use these conventions plus the obligatory scenes of the worldview genre to help you craft an outline or a first draft of a story that works. And just a reminder, if you want to see how these key conventions show up in a few other stories, you can check out the blog post that goes along with this episode that also includes examples from The 40-Year-Old Virgin and Juno. I'll make sure to link to that blog post in the show notes for you guys, but for now, let's dive into the conventions of the worldview genre using the perks of being a wallflower as an example. The first convention you'll want to include in your worldview novel is a mentor. So a mentor is a person or a group of people who gives the protagonist advice, help, guidance, tools, insight, or all of the above. They help to motivate the protagonist and encourage him or her to move on to the next stage in their life. So in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Sam and her brother Patrick act as Charlie's mentors when they bring him into their world and make him feel safe during his first year of high school. You could also say that Charlie's teacher acts as a mentor for him, but really it's Sam and Patrick who are the main mentors for Charlie. The second thing you're going to want to include in your coming-of-age story is a protagonist who has an outdated worldview or some kind of false belief that he or she needs to overcome by the end of the story. So usually this outdated worldview occurs because the protagonist sees the world as they believe it to be, not as it actually is. And because of that, and in order to accomplish their story goal, the protagonist has to face and overcome this outdated worldview or false belief and bloom into a new version of themselves with an updated worldview. So in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie believes that nobody will like him if they really knew all the things that go on inside of his head. He also believes that his Aunt Helen was the best friend he ever had and the only person who truly ever understood him. Since she's passed away now, this adds to his outdated worldview that nobody will like him if they actually knew the real Charlie. So that's convention number two, an outdated worldview. The next convention you're going to want to include in your worldview novel is some kind of social problem or moral challenge that your protagonist has to face or deal with. So some examples of social problems or moral challenges include things like bullying, social class divides, abortion, poverty, civil rights, marital affairs, climate change, gender equality, sexual and gender identity, divorce, and other things like that. Ideally, whatever social problem or moral challenge your protagonist faces will relate to his or her character arc and the outdated worldview that he or she is trying to overcome. So in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie deals with quite a few of these social problems or moral challenges. He deals with the effects of sexual abuse, depression, bullying, his own sexuality and the sexuality of others, and just being an introvert in an extroverted world. And if you've ever seen the movie or read the book, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, you can probably see how some of these issues that Charlie's dealing with relate to his outdated worldview too. So that's convention number three, social problems or moral challenges. The next thing you'll want to include in your worldview story is at least one shapeshifter. Shapeshifters are characters who turn out to be different than they first appear, either to the protagonist, to the reader, or both. Shapeshifters are generally aware of the fact that they're pretending to be something they're not, and they're usually very careful to conceal their identity from the protagonist. And these characters could be good, or they could be bad, or they could even be a mixture of good and bad, depending on where and when they appear in the story. So in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, there are a couple of shapeshifters. The first one is Aunt Helen because she appears to be Charlie's kind and loving aunt, but we later learn that she wasn't so great of a person. 
There's also Brad, who's Patrick's boyfriend, who's also a shapeshifter because he's pretending to be straight and he's keeping his relationship with Patrick a secret. You could also say that Mary Elizabeth is a shapeshifter because she changes behavior and appearance with every new guy she dates. So there's quite a few in this book and in this movie. And that's convention number four, at least one shapeshifter. The next thing you're going to want to include in your worldview story is some kind of internal change within your protagonist. So at some point in the story, your protagonist is going to need to realize that the world isn't going to change and therefore he or she must change instead. And this is really when your character's worldview changes and they can now accept that the world isn't as black and white as he or she originally thought. An example of this kind of change might be a protagonist who decides that he or she is not going to be defined by society or their family anymore, and they accept a new definition of themselves. So it's a definition that he or she has created independently from other people's perception and opinions. So in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie goes through a pretty big internal change. He goes from a state of avoiding the truth about what his Aunt Helen did to him to later accepting the truth. He also learns to be himself and he learns that he can trust others too. I really, really love his character arc in this story. And even though the story is kind of a sad one, I appreciate that it ends on a more hopeful note and that we actually get to see Charlie undergo this kind of internal change and that there's, you know, just hope for him in the future. So that's convention number five, some kind of internal change within your protagonist. The next convention you're going to want to include in your worldview story is some kind of confrontation with the adult world. So no matter how old your protagonist is, he or she is going to be tested throughout the story as an adult. They might be ready for the test or they might be forced into it by circumstances in their life. But whatever happens, it's this confrontation with the adult world that causes him or her to realize that they have to solve their own problems. So parents, friends, and society cannot save them, and they must rely on themselves. In The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie's friends are all older than he is, and they're about to graduate high school. So when they leave for college, Charlie is forced to finally deal with the truth about Aunt Helen on his own. He has to face it, and he has to deal with all the feelings he's been repressing and just the truth that he's kind of been hiding from himself. So that's his confrontation with the adult world. He's being tested as an adult, and he doesn't really have the support system of his friends any longer, so now he has to deal with things on his own. The next thing you'll want to include in your coming-of-age story are friendships. So in worldview stories, friendships often play a much larger and more influential role than the protagonist's relationship with their parents or any kind of authority figure. So throughout a worldview story, the protagonist learns how to define him or herself and stand up for who he or she really is, usually with the support of friends and usually in defiance of parents or authority figures. So in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie becomes friends with Sam and Patrick and learns what it means to have an authentic relationship with people around his own age. Both Sam and Patrick support Charlie and accept him for who he truly is, even after they learn about his breakdown and the truth of what happened with Aunt Helen. So friendships in this story play a very large and a very influential role, and they're kind of what helps Charlie go through this process of change. So that's convention number seven, a big emphasis on friendships. The next thing you'll want to include in your worldview story is some kind of external pressure. Usually this external pressure comes from friends or family or society, and it's this pressure to be a certain way or to meet certain expectations or to fit in with certain norms. The protagonist usually tries to live up to these expectations and experiences unhappiness as a result. And in a story, this manifests as the protagonist chasing their want or this like external goal versus satisfying the thing that they actually need in order to be happy. So this kind of external pressure from friends or family or society that kind of really gives the story its juice for the beginning and most of the middle until the protagonist finally realizes that going about things this way isn't truly going to lead to their happiness or fitting into what their friends, family, or society wants is not going to equal happiness. So in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie deals with all kinds of external pressure from experimenting with drugs and alcohol to pretending to be happy all the time 
to entering into relationships he doesn't fully want, you know, things like that. So he's constantly trying to do what he thinks is expected of him and or things that he think will make them happy when really he just needs to kind of confront this outdated worldview that he has about himself and Aunt Helen. And that's how he'll actually find that happiness. So that's convention number eight is some kind of external pressure. The next thing you'll want to include in your worldview story are secrets. There are three types of secrets that are often present in worldview stories. So number one is secrets that other people keep from your protagonist. Number two is secrets that the protagonist keeps from others. And number three are secrets that the protagonist keeps from themselves. So you can play around with any of these three types of secrets in your story. In The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie keeps what happened with his Aunt Helen a secret from himself and from everyone else. And for a while, he keeps his feelings for Sam a secret, but eventually he lets the truth out. He keeps Patrick's relationship with Brad a secret, even when Brad picks on Patrick. And finally, he keeps the nature of his sister's relationship with Ponytail Derek a secret, even though he abuses her. So lots of secrets in that story. The last convention you'll want to include in your coming-of-age story is a bittersweet ending. At the end of a worldview story, the protagonist has changed. He or she is now equipped with the strength and courage and independence to face the world head-on. But with this new strength comes a loss of innocence and often a certain sadness. These stories don't usually end with a happily ever after, but instead at a new beginning with the sense that there is a lot of life yet to be lived. So it's bittersweet. In The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Charlie has accepted the reality of what happened with his Aunt Helen, which results in a loss of innocence for him. But he now has the support of his friends and family to help him deal with it. So this is something that was missing when he tried to deal with his depression and the secret about Aunt Helen before. So now he's finally equipped to overcome that outdated worldview because he's let people in and he shared his pain with others. So he shared the truth about who he really is and people have stuck around because they love him and they want to help him. So it's a bittersweet ending. And that's it. Those are the conventions of the worldview genre. And if you're thinking, okay, yes, those are all really obvious, Savannah, well, you'd be surprised how many drafts I see that are missing these conventions or that don't include these conventions in a meaningful way. You might also be thinking, okay, all of these sound good, but I don't want to write a cliche or predictable story full of tropes. And if you're feeling that way, I'd encourage you to go listen to episode number 16 that's all about the difference between genre conventions and tropes. In a nutshell, including these genre conventions in your story isn't going to make your story cliche or predictable in a bad way. They're just going to help you write a piece of genre fiction that works. The way you deliver these conventions can fall into cliche territory if you don't put your unique spin on them. But again, you can learn more about that in episode number 16, which I will link to in the show notes for you guys. And now let's quickly recap what the worldview genre conventions are. So convention number one was a mentor. So this is someone to offer your protagonist guidance, support, tools, or whatever they need to be successful. Convention number two was an outdated worldview or some kind of false belief or fear that isn't serving your protagonist anymore. Convention number three was some kind of social problem or moral challenge for your protagonist to face, ideally something that relates to your protagonist's outdated worldview. Convention number four was at least one shapeshifter, but you can have more than one if that's what your story calls for. Convention number five is some kind of internal change in your protagonist. So usually this is some kind of change from viewing the world as really black and white to understanding that there's shades of gray. This could be having a different understanding of their place in the world or a different understanding of themselves. Just anything that causes that worldview to change. Convention number six is some kind of confrontation with the adult world. So no matter how old your protagonist is, they're going to be tested as an adult throughout the entire story. Whatever happens, it's this confrontation with the adult world that causes him or her to realize that they have to solve their own problems and they can't rely on other people to solve their problems for them. Convention number seven is a big emphasis on friendships versus authority figures or parents or other adults. So friendships are very important in these type of stories. 
Convention number eight is external pressure. So usually this is some kind of pressure from friends or family members or society to be a certain way. And this is what your protagonist has to overcome by the end of the story. Convention number nine is secrets. So remember, there's three types of secrets. Secrets the protagonist keeps from other people, secrets that other people keep from your protagonist, and secrets that the protagonist keeps from themselves. Convention number 10 is a bittersweet ending. So usually this is because the protagonist has lost a little bit of their innocence and they've seen the world in a new light. So yes, things didn't work out 100% the way they wanted, but there's hope for a better future. And as a quick reminder, these are the elements that readers come to these types of stories for. They love them. So I actually read a lot of worldview stories. I read a lot of young adult fantasy, and I love the emphasis on friendship, and I love the bittersweet endings. And if both of these things didn't exist, or if one was kind of downplayed, I would for sure walk away from those stories feeling disappointed. So Long story short, please don't do that to your readers. Don't skip over these conventions or leave them out of your story. Instead, use them to help you flesh out and construct your story and then figure out a way to deliver those conventions in new and unexpected ways. And if you do that, you'll not only write a story that works, but you'll probably gain fans for life too. And that's the dream, right? So that's it for today's show. As always, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in and showing your support. If you want to check out any of the links I mentioned in this episode, you can find them over at savannagilbo.com forward slash podcast. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the show because there's going to be another brand new episode coming out next week. If you're an Apple user, I'd really appreciate it if you took a few seconds to leave a quick rating and review. Your ratings and reviews tell iTunes that this is a podcast that's worth listening to. And in turn, that helps this show get in front of more fiction writers just like you. So that's it for today's show. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, happy writing.